Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope that everybody's having a great day. Uh, it's Tuesday. I'm back as promised. Uh, I am uh, here to roll over the conversation we had on yesterday, uh, which was primarily focused on uh, debunking the myth of poverty and exposing the wealth mindset. Uh, I'm going to finish where I left off. I'm going to kind of highlight that. Uh, once again, I want to thank everybody that's been sending you well wishes. Yes, I'm doing better. I'm feeling okay. Uh, almost 100%, not quite there, but definitely on the mend. Uh, once again, thank you. I want to invite everybody to go over to uh, my Master Fitness 21 page, uh, where we are doing the 60-day holistic health and fitness challenge. I want you to be a part of that. I want you to set some goals mentally, emotionally, psychologically, physically, and financially that are associated with health. And I want you to set them, and that's what we're shooting for. That's what we're going into 2020 with, a healthier body, a healthier mind, a healthier financial uh, mindset and reality. And so we're going to talk about something uh, that we, I sort of uh, got a chance to get off the ground on yesterday, but I didn't have enough time. I had a bunch of clients I had to get to, uh, but I definitely want to come back to it. And it, it, it started out, but I want to remind you, if you haven't gotten uh, the last two books, Critical Mass or I Am, the links are in the uh, description box of this video, no matter where you are going to be going to be watching it at, whether you're watching it live now on Facebook, or you're going to be watching it later on YouTube uh, and Vimo and uh, a couple of other places, it, it's going to be there. Also, if you want to work directly one-on-one -on -one with me, uh, the preliminary questionnaire is going to be in the description box. Fill it out, email it in, and let's get started. Uh, if you have questions about uh, the 60-day challenge, which itself is a free participation, uh, uh, email us and we'll, we'll answer your questions. If you want to actually enroll in a program or a course, which does cost, definitely take it to the next level. We're ready to facilitate that as well. Uh, just send us an inquiry about what it is you want to work on and we will get you set up. Okay, with that out of the way, we started out yesterday talking about something that most of us who come from meager beginnings, uh, who had parents who were committed to improving uh, our state of existence and preparing us to do better than they did. One of the things you heard a lot in some form was, you, you need to learn a trade or get a degree. And if you learn a trade or get a degree, you'll never go broke or you'll never starve to death. You'll never go hungry. Some form of that was do get this degree or get this trade and you'll never starve to death. You'll never go hungry. Uh, you'll never be broke, blah, blah, blah. And what the point I made yesterday was uh, without even being aware of it, that statement in and of itself speaks of a mindset that facilitates poverty. And people are like, how is that? It's not from an, uh, an empowerment perspective. It's not from an, an excelling or a standard of excellence perspective. It's from a state of desperation and survival. If you do this, you won't die. Ultimately is what it's saying. Do this so you don't die. It's not saying, man, if you do this, you will excel, you will achieve, you will go beyond your wildest dream. We're not even reaching for that. We'll just try not to starve and try not to die. Trying not to walk around with lint in our pockets. That's the goal. No, that's not the goal you're striving for. You're striving for a situation where money is no longer an option, where you see money completely differently. And I'm going to start this. We talked, we started out yesterday with a universal statement. And I'm going to start today with a universal question. And then I'm going to kind of take that and close things out. Uh, the, the universal statement was that, that, you know, hey, get a degree, get a, uh, get a tr learn a trade, get a degree, and you won't starve to death. The truth of the matter is that's not a guarantee. A trade has a lot more marketability in today's society than a degree does, but uh, you still got to do some other things. But here, here's the question today. With where you are now, the job you're working on, 
the amount of savings you have in your bank account, the amount of money you have in your checking account, the amount of assets you may own in different, uh, you know, um, different uh, areas um, of investment or whatever it is, whatever your total net worth is, after you take all your debts and liabilities away, what's your worth right now? What's your job and everything like that? If I were to take away, not me, because th that's, not, that's not what I do, but if for some reason life will come along and take away your job, take away your savings, take away your assets and leave you at zero. Would you be with the way you think now, the way you move now, be able to get back to at least where you are right now or beyond? Now, remember, you don't have the job. So the job, you can't count on that money. You've got to have in your mind. Can you guarantee? And here's the thing. The first thing you're going to go through if your mindset isn't right is where am I going to get my next job? So you're already depending on someone else to look out for your best interests when their responsibility isn't your best interest. Their responsibility is to find people that can work for them for the least amount of money, get the most done. Now, in some instances, you will get paid in what will people will consider to be relatively a good wage, but you're not in control of it because they are. You've already lost one job. Whatever way life took that from you, you lost it. So can you get back? Now, here's the second part of the question. Think of a wealthy person that you're familiar with, whether you know them or not. If you know somebody that's wealthy, that's even better. If you know somebody that's independently wealthy, uh, that's great. If not, if you know of someone that maybe you aspire to be like or you are striving to emulate or whatever, think about that person. Now, apply the same question. If they took, if life took everything away from them, would they be able to get back to where they are or beyond? And before you can even get to thinking about it, you already know they will. Uh, according to Forbes, the average high net worth individual will go bankrupt a minimum of three times in their lifetime. Why? Because going after big things comes with risk. And the thing is, they don't mind taking the risk because their mindset says, if I lose it, I'll get it back. And they'll go after things and they'll experience things that the average person won't experience because they're willing to take the risk, they're willing to go out. And I said this yesterday, what we have to realize now is what used to be safe isn't safe and what used to be risky isn't as risky as what used to be safe. What used to be safe is you go out, get you a job, and your goal was to stay with that one job, show that job loyalty, that, jo that company will show you loyalty. You would literally work your entire career with one company, and you would retire, and you would get your pension. Um, and you would hope that that pension was enough to sustain you in your retirement years. Well, we know now that that's not how the market works now. That's not how the job market is set up. The job market is set up to... Uh, be highly streamlined in what it what it what, what what it's paying out what it's putting out and to find the best and everything is about finding the best market it's on both sides so you got companies that are constantly looking for the best employer and you got employees that are constantly looking for the best job so loyalty is no longer at the top of the tape at the top of the uh pendulum so whatever happens now is based on you finding a fit in consistently showing your value, but at the end of the day, you're still depending on someone whose uh, number one responsibility isn't your best interest to support and uh, look out for your best interest. That So the old safe isn't safe any longer. Uh, we're proving that every day. And like I told people on yesterday, I had the uh, responsibility of repatriating all of the expatriates of Enron back in 2002, 2003, somewhere up in there, uh, when it when when Enron tanked, and I was the one that repatriated all their high level executives from all over the world. I brought them back, and I had uh, the displeasure of telling them what their severance packages is going to be, what's going on. And there was this one lady who worked for an executive who was a personal assistant, assistant who ended up losing her entire uh, retirement because she went so heavily off into Enron stock based off of false uh, reports. 
uh, she lost everything she was going to retire with. And she was in her late 50s, early. She was close to retirement. Uh, and we talked about, so it's not safe. And now what we're looking at is we're looking at a world now where the small business market, the entrepreneurial uh, environment is what's holding the economy together. Small businesses, uh, not the corporations, but small businesses, people taking their talents and their value uh, in the marketplace and creating their own unique space for themselves. So you wake up every day, you're not going to fire yourself. You wake up every day, you're going to go in and you're going to put in the work. You're going to buy into your vision. You're going to buy into your dream. You're going to buy into the responsibilities that are motivating you, the obligations that are motivating you. You're going to get up every day and you're going to put in the work. Yes, there can be some days that are lean. I'm telling you, I know some days that are lean. But the one thing that I can do when I ask that question, I can not only answer not only answer that question theoretically, I can answer it experientially. Uh, I have been in a situation where I've been in places financially that were remarkable that, you know, when I first started this thing, I, I didn't even think about getting there until later on when I saw that it was possible. And I've been there, then I got knocked completely off. I've landed flat on my back. I've been in places that you could not have told me um, before, uh, things fell apart that I could ever follow that for. And the arrogance in that mindset is what made it possible. But I learned from it. But the one thing that never happened was me sitting there going, oh my God, what am I going to do now? Because see, because I created it from within and I worked it from within, the mindset already told me I've done it once, I'll do it again. So I began to work on it. And I mean, and I started having to go there. I didn't have to go ask somebody, uh, you know, could you give me a job? And this isn't taking shots at anybody who, who works a job. Everybody do what you have to do to be who you need to be to take care of what you need to take care of. That's not what this is about. What I'm telling you is there comes a place uh, and, and, and time when you have to think different if you want different. And it's going to call you to get cause you to have to get out of your comfort zone is going to cause you to have to step into an entirely new way of thinking that's going to be extremely uncomfortable and unfamiliar, but it's where growth takes place. And so when I sit up and I'm looking, I'm saying, man, talking about starting from scratch. I started from scratch. I didn't beg anybody for anything. I didn't appeal to anybody for any type of handout. I sit up and said, this is what I'm going to build. And I started building and I started building and I started building. And now I'm sitting on multiple companies. I'm sitting on multiple streams of income. I'm nowhere near where I was when I was at my height, but I'm definitely nowhere close to where I was when I was on my back. And I was able to do it from my mindset, from being able to sit up and understand how money works, to understand how the mindset of approaching things. So you cannot get to independent wealth with a survival mindset of, I'm not gonna starve, I'm not gonna go broke. Because you may never starve and you may never go broke, but you will never live at the height of what you can possibly live at as long as you are operating from fear. You have to get out of that. And the, one of the things is when you're operating in survival mode, something else happens that almost guarantees that you're gonna remain stuck. And that is you begin to ask questions from a problem-centered perspective. Man, what's wrong with me? Man, why can't I ever get this to go right? Why is it that so many businesses fail? Why, everything is looking for the answer to the negative problem. The problem is when you start looking for those answers, you're gonna get the negative. When you start asking those negative questions coming from a, a problem-centered questions, you're gonna get problem-centered answers. It's gonna tell you why you're gonna fail. It's going to tell you why this is. And, and the thing is, while you may need to understand some of the things that are going on, what you focus on, what you give your attention on to is what you feel. So if you're giving your attention to the negative, it's going to multiply and intensify the negative. You don't need problem-centered questions. You need solution-centered questions. How can I be the person who doesn't fail? How do I avoid failure? What do I need to do to ensure my success? How am I going to rise above this? How will I fulfill my full potential? It is the question. But if you start out in survival mode, all you're trying to figure out, how do I keep some change in my pocket? How do I keep the lights on? How do I get the car note paid? Uh, 
That's survival mode. It, it, and when you're when you're in that survival mode, when you're in that, look, I just want to get a trade. I'm not telling you don't get a trade, but I'm telling you that there's a person with a trade that's just trying to play your bills. There's a person with a trade who wants to start their company. Two totally different mindsets, two totally different trajectories, and two totally different outcomes. It's about what you think. It's not about what you do. It's about how you think. It's about how you approach it. It's about what you're able to see yourself doing. If all you see is yourself struggling, you will struggle. I don't care how gifted you are. I don't care how many degrees you get. I don't care how many uh, uh, opportunities are put in front of you. If you can't get away from seeing yourself struggle and raise the level at which you approach life, you will never see anything but struggle. It's a mindset. What you focus on, you will feel. It's that simple. Again, I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's almost impossible to explain how you can go from that to that, but it happens. It happens far more often than you think. But what I can tell you is when I hit that, I didn't panic. I knew I was in for a hard, hard ride. But all I told God was this. And it, it, it's like, yes, I didn't beg. I didn't whine, complain. I didn't ask for, oh, just get me and take me out of that. I had to went through that a long time ago, begging God to take me out of things he sent me to conquer. God is never going to deliver you from the giants. He, he, he designed and sent you to slay. You can pray, you can beg, you can scream, you can cry. It, it, it's not going to happen. You are here for a reason. And, and when you find that purpose inside of it, it's going to be challenges. It's going to be difficult moments. It's going to be running into walls and setbacks and experiencing delay. It's a part of the process, but you're not going to be delivered from it. So don't waste your time begging and pleading about being taken away from what you were sent to conquer. It's in your conquering that others will be inspired. So I didn't beg God when I hit rock bottom. I didn't beg God, uh, oh, get me back to where. No, I told God one simple thing. Don't let me die in this. If you wake me up every morning, I'll answer the bell. I knew I had in me what it took to recover. I didn't need him to do anything but to wake me up in my right mind. I got it from here. I'm going to get up, I'm going to grind, but I'm going to grind with purpose. I'm not going to grind with the mindset that I'm trading my time for money because that's only so much time. I'm going to grind by bringing value to the table that dictates how much I can demand for what I bring. And that's the difference. A person who's in a survival mode is going to sit up and look at how many coins they can get for what they do each hour. And then they're going to get to the, that eight hours, and eventually they're going to run into problems that's going to let them see that the eight hours isn't enough for the coins they're getting for that hour. And so instead of sitting up and saying, how do I increase what I get an hour, they go get another job in the evening time to work more hours for the same amount of coins or less, trying to meet the demand, and you run out of time. So how do you overcome that? Stop trading your time for coin and start trading your, 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 your value for coin. What do you bring into the table? What is it worth to a certain target audience? What is it worth to a certain group? How are you seeing yourself? Because inside of you is abundance. There's no such thing as lack. There's no such thing truthfully as poverty. Poverty is a mindset. It's not a reality. It's a mindset that creates the world you live in because you are accepting it. When you understand that inside of you is this abundance and this infinite wealth, that there's something that you are gifted to do that will change the world. And because it's that powerful, it will also change your life financially when you tap into it and when you demand it of yourself. That's the importance of it. It's not accepting the moment you're in, but creating a new one. And understand the word I, I use. I use creating. I didn't use compete. I'm not competing with anybody in my field because nobody in my field is me. I'm creating my own space in this field, a space that is built 
to operate and work off of how I'm built. I'm not competing with Eric Thomas. I'm not competing with Tony Robbins. I'm not competing with Les Brown. I absolutely admire those guys. I've studied them. I've learned from them. I've communicated with a few of them. I, I, I know what's going on. I've got feedback and I'm doing me and I'm building what I'm building. And I built it from the scratch, from scratch. From scratch. I've, had, I've experienced setbacks, but I've never folded. And I understand something that I teach my clients and then I'll, I'll be done. Delay does not mean denial. I see so many people folding because it's not happening quick enough. Delay does not mean denial. The one thing that I made up in my mind a long time ago that has served me well is that I don't commit to things that I'm not willing to go the distance for. And if I commit to it, I'm going the distance, meaning that if I'm either going to get what I'm after, or I'm going to die trying. There's no other options. There is no plan B. I remember when me and my wife first got together, she asked me, she says, you got all this stuff going on and you got your mindset on what you're going to do. Do you have a plan B? And I'm like, nope, absolutely not. If you, the moment you adopt a plan B, you might as well kick plan A to the curb to the curve and just give it up. Why? Because the moment that it becomes difficult, the moment that it becomes painful, the moment that it becomes excruciating, you're going to ditch plan A for plan B because plan B is definitely going to seem easier at the time. They say Cortez, when Cortez landed on the shores of Mexico with the purpose of conquering Mexico and colonizing Mexico for Spain, the moment that he touched down and the men got off the ship, he gave the artist to burn the ship. Why? No plan B. It's amazing what you can do with plan A when there is no plan B. But plan B almost guarantees that plan A won't work because it's going to get hard. It's going to get difficult. It's going to get scary. And if you got an alternative, you're going to take it. I don't want an alternative. I'm putting in the work. I'm going to get it. I'm going to die trying. Either way works for me, but I, it will never be said that I fold. That's the legacy that you build. On that note, I'm going to get off of here. As I always say, live your life on full so that you die on it. On that note, I'm out. Peace.